Hi, my name is Deanna Guerrero, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to continue talking about the dreams that God has given to you. Those desires of your heart that you've always wanted to fulfill, and maybe for some reason or another, you've started them but haven't been able to fulfill them. Or maybe they've just been a thought, but you haven't pursued them. So today I'd like to continue along those lines talking about the dreams, the purposes, and the plans that God has placed in your heart. So what I wanna do is review what we talked about last week. Now the first thing, the first step that we talked about was that you need to realize that no matter where you are in your life, where you come from, how old you are, what nationality you are, wherever you live in the world, it doesn't matter. God knows where you are in your life and he knows where he wants to take you. So I want you to get that vision in your head. Just kind of start thinking about that. Where does God want me to be? What is the dream, the desire that God has placed in me? No limitations, no boundaries. It doesn't, circumstances don't matter. Just believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you. Now the second step is once you believe it, is to start writing down those plans, those purposes, the dreams that he's placed in you. Maybe it's something simple, you know, sometimes people think that it has to be some grand dream that God has placed in them, otherwise it's just, you know, no big deal. But sometimes it's those little things that keep us from accomplishing the big things. Um, there's no dream too big and there's no dream too small. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Maybe your dream is to lose weight or to run a marathon. Maybe it's to learn a new language. Those are all accomplishable dreams. But write it down. Write the vision and write it plain upon the tables. Remember we read that last week in Habakkuk and you review it often. I also want to mention here um, while we're on that subject that sometimes our dreams, our plans, our purposes change. You know, when I was in my 20s, my dreams were different than what they are today. So you also progress as you meet, reach one dream or goal, then you develop others. It's always an ongoing process. You never stop. So just keep that in mind as you write down your dreams. What is it that God wants me to do right now? What is the first step that I can take? Envision it, admit that God has a dream for you. Get it in your head, get it in your heart. Then write it down and keep it somewhere where you review it daily. Because if you can't see it here, then you can't achieve it. You must see it here first before you will achieve it. You've got to see it in your mind. And then the third step was to know that you have to be faithful in that which is the little before you can accomplish the much. So it's in reaching those small goals, those everyday steps, because even one inch is progress. You know, um, let's use weight loss as an example of a goal. Maybe you have quite a bit of weight to lose, and I know that can be very difficult. But every time that you make the proper choice, nutritionally, you're one inch closer. When you choose to exercise, you're one inch closer to your goal weight. Um, I've had many people um, tell me that they could never run. I, I'm a runner. Let me just preface the same that I'm a runner and I, I run. I love to run. You know, it just gives me an adrenaline rush to run and clears my mind and it relieves stress and it's good for you. <laughs> but I've always been a runner. I just really enjoy it. And when people hear that about me, they'll say things like, ah, I can never run and running's boring and I've never been able to run. And I always tell them, anyone can run. I could teach you to run. I've taught many people to run, people that said they could never run. And I, I always start them with this. I tell them, you can run one minute, right? And they're like, okay, I can run one minute. So then I just start them running one minute, walking a minute. 
And before you know it, they're running a mile. And then I'm like, okay, you're running a mile. Now you can run two miles. And before you know it, they're running three miles. And I always say, if you can run three miles and you can run six miles, you know, but that's how you reach your goal. It's putting one foot in front of the other every day, going a little bit closer, but you're being faithful in that which is small. Okay, got it? Now, I want to review one of our founding scriptures, which is Jeremiah 29 11. And I want you to hear God speaking this to you because he is. He's speaking it directly from the owner manual, owner's manual, the blueprint for your, for, for your life. He's reading it to you. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to speak it to you. But it's God that's actually speaking it to you. He's saying, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has a great future and a great plan for your life. And all he's asking is for you to be obedient. And if you'll follow these steps, you will accomplish those dreams. I, I just love that verse. Um, it just, it lifts you up, it builds you up. And sometimes I'll just read it over and over to myself or I'll just think about it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give me a future and a hope. Because I make it mine. I know this is what God's saying to me. So do that. Spend time in the Word. Go, go over these scripture references that I give you and just make them yours. You'll never know what God has for you if you don't spend time if, if you don't spend the time in his word. Very important. This is a key step, spending time in the word of God every day. And again, like I mentioned last week, you don't have to spend hours and hours. You can just take one little verse every day and read it. Think on it, meditate on it. Ask God to reveal his truth in his word to you. Okay? This is the key to living the good life that God has for you. Now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27. This is in the New Testament, y'all. Okay. I thought I had placed a, a little sticky so I'd find it quickly, but I didn't. So, And it says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So just listen to this. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So maybe you're like me. And um, you really didn't think you had any gifts or talents and nothing extraordinary about you. But God's saying, God said this to me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you know. If you'll spend time in my word, I'll use you to confound the wise. And then he goes on to say that he's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Another word for mighty would be strong. You know, maybe you feel like you're a weak person, you know, and you have so much to overcome. And God's saying, you know what? I specialize in that. I can take you and I can make something extraordinary out of you. Just believe me and we can do it together. Okay? So I want you to write that, that verse down so you can refer to it often. It's 1 Corinthians 1.27. And just ask God to reveal more of his wisdom in his word and he will. I just want to share a little inspirational story with you. Um, maybe you've heard it before but it just so inspires me that I want to share it with you today. It's the story of Abraham Lincoln or part of his story. You know Abraham Lincoln grew up um, in very humble um, beginnings or he started in very humble beginnings like me and probably like many of you. And um, he just really had a hunger and thirst for, for wisdom and knowledge. And he didn't have much schooling, but he would walk miles and miles just to get a book. 
And then when he got that book, he would read it, you know, way into the night. Um, they didn't have electricity then, so he would read from the light of the fireplace. You know, that is a real deep hunger for knowledge, you know, and he would read the book, and he would read the books over and over again, you know, but he had a hunger and thirst for knowledge. And so he really applied himself to learning. And I'm telling you, that's so important. Not only that, but later, um, still as a young man, he witnessed something that changed the course of his life. And it, it, it put a deep, burning desire and dream within him that he knew he had to change the world because of this. And it was, he was um, at a slave auction. He wasn't there participating. He was walking by and he witnessed a family being torn apart. A couple of the family members, the mom and the children went to this family, to this plantation, and another, um, the father and maybe another child went to another plantation. And they were crying, and they were heartbroken, and he saw that in them. And he just, he, he made fists, and his, he was so angry that he couldn't do anything that his hands began to bleed because of his nails digging into his the palms of his hands. He was so distraught about it. And he vowed in his heart that he would do something about this sometime in his future. So then, you know, he went on. He had an entrepreneur spirit. And he started a couple of businesses. Um, both of them failed. And as a matter of fact, um, one of the businesses, he had borrowed money from a friend to open this business. And then within a year, the bank, the, the, the business went bankrupt. Can you imagine, you know, he was knocked down. You know, he was an honest man. He was a hardworking man. He wanted to make these businesses work so that he could make a difference, but they failed. Did he stay down? No, he got right back up. Then he applied to law school. And do you know that he wasn't accepted into law school? Did he quit? No. He decided, you know what, I want to be a lawyer. So he began to study, and he studied until he passed the bar exam. No formal education, but he passed the bar exam and became a lawyer. And that was all before he entered into politics. And then once he entered into politics, he lost eight different elections before he became president in 1860. Then once he was president and the North and the South, you know, um, split and there's now this civil war going on, two of his sons died. These are insurmountable odds. Did this man give up? No, he didn't. As much pain as he was in, he just got back up, dusted off, you know, dusted himself off and went forward. He had a purpose. He had a dream. So I don't think any of us have any reason to give up on our dreams until we have been through what this man has been through. Maybe some of you have, but I'm telling you, don't give up yet. Don't give up. This reminds me of a scripture. Um, in the Old Testament, and it's found in Micah, verse 7 and 8. So let me turn there quickly, and I'll read it to you. Um, verse 7, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 8. And it says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So God's telling you, to speak to those people in your life that are glad when you fall down. And we all know people that are happy when we fail or when we, you know, don't have the great success that we thought we would in, in some endeavor. God is saying, tell them, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. And then God is telling us that he will be a light to us. Light represents a way shining away for us. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 
This is a scripture you have to um, put to your memory so you can speak it to those situations and circumstances that come up against you. He tells us that through him, we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth us. He will make us strong where we are weak. God loves us. He loves us so much. And in Romans 8, 37, I want to read this to you. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, who loved us. He's telling us you're not just going to be a conqueror. You're going to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves us. He loves you. God loves you. He created you with a purpose. He put that dream in you. He put those steps right in front of you so that you could get to that big dream that he has planted in your heart. Don't give up. Never give up. Now I'm going to leave you with a scripture from Acts 20, 24. And this is Paul speaking to us. And he's saying, but none of these things move me. Not all these things that are coming against me, not all these tribulations, none of these things move me. And he's saying, I don't even count my life dear unto myself. But I want to finish this race with joy. I'm paraphrasing there. He's saying, I'm going to finish my race. I'm not just going to finish that race. I'm not just going to finish the, cross the finish line, but I want to do it with joy. And don't you know that you can do all things better when you, you're joyful about it? You can. Get busy. Get busy reading this. Get busy with the blueprint for your life, the owner's manual, finding out what God wants for you, what God's plans and purposes are for you. He'll speak it into your spirit. He'll reveal it with those desires in your heart. You can do anything that you think you can do. You can. Anything you want to do, you can do it if you'll put God first place in your life and you use your abilities. And part of your abilities is to read this daily. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. And I'll see you next week.